We have a broadband authority that we joined with our neighbors uh, a few years ago, Roanoke County, City of Salem, <coughs> Mattatot County, uh, and the effort was to provide high-speed 21st century uh, broadband connections in, on the commercial level to, for economic development. Now, these signs, these posters that you see here, these aren't just talking points. If you read House Bill 2108, you cannot come away with any other conclusion other than it is, it is capital, cr corporate, cronyism at its best. What it does is it provides favoritism to the local carriers or to the legacy carriers. And if you look at it, what's really interesting is if the speeds or the need, if the speeds drop below a certain point or if the need is demonstrated for more service, guess who gets to pay for that additional service if requested? The localities. The localities provide subsidies to the ca corporate carriers. That's what this is. This is nothing but a, but a bill to support corporate cronyism, and that is crazy. Now, th there, have been, there have been some arguments, and there have been some, some, some points made that uh, this legislation is needed uh, because existing legislation does not exist or is not in place uh, to protect uh, the system as it is. You've just heard several examples of success stories, and we can tell you success stories, and I'll just give you a little bit of insight into what was going on in the Roanoke Valley in 2012. This was not a government initiative. This was an initiative that was started by businesses. Businesses came to us and said, we can't get service in certain areas. Our service is limited to 10 megabits. And you, well, how much is 10 megabits? This is 20th century speed not 21st century speed, yet House Bill 2108 only requires that you provide 10 megabits of service, and then if you fall below that, that's what triggers intervention by the municipality. So what we decided is we decided to study to see whether, in fact, uh, uh, such service uh, by the municipality was necessary. And that study was actually funded, in, funded by businesses, not by the localities. The businesses coughed up most of the money to fund the study. And they came back and they said, yes, this service is needed. And we made a presentation to our, uh, to, to our colleagues in other jurisdictions. And as I said, Botox County, Roanoke County, City of Roanoke, City of Salem joined the Roanoke Valley uh, uh, Broadband Authority. And what's very interesting, and I hear our friends here in Richmond saying, you know, we're looking out for the taxpayers' money. I'm looking out for Roanoke City taxpayers' money. I have to stand for election every four years. If I want to be reelected, I better be able to account for that money. And there are two other members of Roanoke City Council here today, and I challenge anybody to identify one email or one telephone call that any of us have gotten objecting to Roanoke's participation in the, in the Roanoke Valley Broadband Authority. Not one. Not one taxpayer has said you're wasting my money. In fact, we've had nothing but support from the public, nothing but support from the press, and we believe that this is just a bill to protect the legacy carriers, and we are asking folks to read it. Simply read it. Look at the details. Look at what is required. If the locality decides that more service is needed, that faster service is needed, you got to send out an RFP, and then after you get the RFP, if the providers decide that they need capital to help them build it out, guess who pays for it? The taxpayers pay for it. But who does that equipment belong to at the end of the day? It belongs to the providers. And you want to talk about what's fair and what's not fair. Uh, 2108 is corporate cronyism, and I challenge anyone to prove to me that it's not. Thank you very much. I've already gone over my time, and I apologize for that. I'd like to introduce you uh, to uh, Stephanie Karen from Louisa County. She's got some comments for you as well.